can come in and work. We find that work is one of the most healthy things that can be provided to people because it gives you meaning, it gives, uh, despite whatever your intellectual functioning is, it's something that is meaningful, I think, to, to our people. We try our best to provide real work, invite you to come by and see some of the contracts we have and the production that we're actually doing over there. Um, I think they'll build these chairs at one time. That's correct. These are, these are one of our products, yes. Um, the, um, I think today, I, I don't even know what our numbers are over there, I think we're somewhere in, in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 individuals that come in and work and they're, they're coming in from various areas. We do bring people in from Carnes County as well. Um, the administrative building just right next door is mainly where our case managers and uh, our, well we call them i got to get this straight because my, keep my terminology, we call them service coordinators on the IDD side. Um, <clears throat> and, and stop me if the acronyms are, are a bit much, but basically those are the people who do home visits. They, they work out of that as their home base to get out and do home visits, whether it's Stockdale, you know, Lavernia, uh, Carnes County area. Some may even go over into the Atascosa County, but uh, they return home back to their office at the end of the day, do their progress uh, reporting and so forth. But a lot of times you won't find people in that building during the day, but at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day is, is the main time they're going to be there. But their main thing is to coordinate services for these people, whether they're uh, adults or whether they're children, and facilitate them receiving services from the various areas that they need to have services. The last piece is what we refer to that's located at the plaza is our early childhood, early childhood intervention program. This is services that we provide to babies who are zero to three years of age. And uh, again, this is mostly, most of those services, or I should say all of those services, are provided out in the field. In other words, the workers go out and see the families with their babies in their homes, in the daycare, wherever they need, wherever the, that situation calls for, and provide stimulation services to um, promote this child overcoming some of the handicaps that they have. Emma can talk with that program much more, with much more exper expertise than I can with her background uh, in that area. Um, <clears throat> we have, uh, as we look to the future, uh, we've got new concepts that are coming down and one of the things we're trying to do with our services is integrate more with uh, physical health. In other words, what we're finding is that on the mental health side, uh, a lot of our folks need to have services that take into consideration not only their mental health or behavioral health challenge, but they simultaneously can have other physical health, like diabetes, so heart problems, and so forth, and that sometimes aggravates that behavioral health situation, and if we can get our, our services to where we integrate and coordinate the approach uh, to, to that individual, we, we, the research at least tells us that you can be much more effective. So we're just now in the beginning stages of thinking about that, so as we talk about a facility, we may, we may be wanting to uh, combine these, these things together. <clears throat> um, so that's, that's, in a nutshell, the programs, the services, the, the clinical aspect of it. What we think, uh, right now, the space that we have in the four different areas probably constitutes somewhere in the neighborhood of about, I'd say, 15 to 20,000 square feet. Uh, what we've conceptualized is, is a building that's going to be somewhere between 20 and 30,000 square feet. Really, I don't have an architect in place, I've not done any work. We are just right now in the very preliminary conceptual stages of, of trying to uh, process through this. Um, I guess that's one of the reasons that I wanted to see the survey is to see exactly what kind of uh, acreage do we have out 
in that in that particular spot, and I'm understanding it's somewhere in the four to five acre uh, area, but don't don't really know that for sure. Um, Emma, do you want to add anything? I guess what I would add is that we are part of uh, county government. We are have nine counties participate uh, in our center that make up who we are. We have nine board of trustees, one from each each county. Our dollars are primarily from state agencies, from the Department of State <coughs> Health Services, Aging and Disability Services, uh, our Department of uh, Assistive and Rehabilitative Services. So we get a, a good portion of our dollars from those uh, state entities. About 48, 49% is coming and then from, from those funding sources. The remainder is what we uh, generate. Through our, our various contracts, we have contracts with most of the managed care organizations and we bill for the services that we render. Um, our our uh, participation and integration with the community is with just about every aspect of the community. We're, we work with the schools with our children's program. We're uh, in, as Erwin indicated, daycares, uh, uh, different components of the community as we try to help the person with disabilities really assimilate and become very much an active part and a contributing member as much as possible of their community. So uh, our desire, back in 2006, 2005, our board charged us with um, purchasing the building that now houses our administrative uh, offices in Lytle. And uh, we were also given the opportunity at that point in time to look at where else we could possibly house this administrative complex. And we were actively looking at that veterans uh, park area because our, our desire is to bring uh, those programs together and really build a, a site that uh, addresses our needs. We struggle with the buildings that we're in because we've retrofitted ourselves into some of these buildings that have been made available either through an in-kind donation or it was available property and we're paying lease on it and kind of just figure out how to work within that building. But if we could, from the beginning, design it and, and make it be something that reflects the dignity, dignity and respect the consumer base uh, deserves, that is one of the things that we would like to accomplish by having this concept of, of um, building a new. Uh, we're also at a very exciting time with our uh, agency. We are participating in what's called the 1115 waiver. I don't know what what uh, uh, areas y'all come from, or that's even language that you've heard, but it is a uh, statewide effort in which dollars are being made available to us so that we can continue to develop uh, some of our programs that will help uh, uh, turn around the way that we are providing um, uh, some of the services and be more effective with the dollars that we do get. And it's a, an, era, a, 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 an era of growth for us. For many, many years now, we've been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking as the Texas budget uh, uh, shrunk, our program shrink. And right now, as you all well know, there's uh, more revenue, there's been more investment, there's been just a real heightened awareness of the importance of mental health uh, programs in the community. There's been significant tragedies nationwide that have uh, unfortunately, it's taken that to heighten the awareness of how important it is to um, identify these situations and try to mitigate them before some tragedy starts. And we, we come out and we provide mental health first aid training to the community. So we're really in a lot of places, a lot, a lot of time with with, very, with um, um, uh, I think effective use of dollars. So our desire is to consider this community, which has been. Really, we look back at our history. We've been working together for like 34 years. Wilson County is the only original county that we still have that when we started, because the state would change, you know, well now you have this configuration, and now we redistrict you and we're in this configuration. Wilson County is one that we have had presence in since 1982, 1983. And um, it would be wonderful to be able to do something like that. Question for Well, so what you're considering is that incorporating additional medical services yeah, there, constantly besides yeah. what you have yeah. in the mental health side. Right. Additional medical time. We're currently right. in conversations with the FQHC. Uh, uh, Monty Small has a, a clinic in this location. 
we've been in conversations with him as well as his counterparts in the rest of the areas that we cover to see how it is that we can jointly look at delivery uh, of services that are a little more comprehensive. Um, bringing behavioral health into the primary care setting and bringing primary care into the behavioral health setting so that persons uh, that do have a hard time organizing their thoughts and their schedules and uh, can't really keep appointments, we're finding that they die 25 to 30 years before the general population from treatable conditions. But because those chronic illnesses do not get addressed, they're dying. That's okay. Uh, uh, they die much earlier, and, and our desire is to, to, to make an impact on that and bring the opportunity for them to have primary health care alongside their behavioral health care and not one for the or, or the other. Um, I've got a question, I guess, for um, Erwin. That is, um, can you identify if, uh, if it's public information, your funding sources and you know, um, bottom line, are you looking for um, discounted prices or some sort of participation economically in the purchase of land um, from us? I mean, it's real straightforward. It, we don't have to pull any punches. But just if you wouldn't mind telling us where 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 you get your money and do we, are we expected to chip See, in? Emma's going to report on me though when I go back. <laughs> She's going to report to the board what I say <laughs> in regards to this. I see. So I have to say, uh, do y'all know Judge Bavellet from uh, Carnes County, Carnes City. Carn City and so forth? Uh, he's always on, on me for you know how, how we approach things. So uh, yes, we, we're always going to want the discounted price and you know as a service delivery system in the community okay I, I have to say that but by the same token we we want to push forward and develop services and if we have to buy and purchase land if that's if that's what it has to be we will do that I have we have available to us bond programs uh, at a state level that uh, we, we can access, okay? But... Um, and you all are needing four to, I mean, you mentioned six acres to me, but it, in the four to six I, acre I, range? I, I, think, I think the four to five acre is, is, is should, should be adequate. Okay. I, you know, I, that, we're, we're in a build, we're in a 20,000 square foot building right now in Lytle, and we're squeezed uh, on an acre and a half, uh, and we just about have adequate. I mean, it's a good good office complex. Uh, does not have a shelf workshop, but and I'll come back to that in just a second. And we've got uh, somewhere in the neighborhood, I think, of seventy or eighty usable parking spaces because the fire fire chief, you know, wanted yeah. us to dedicate Some fire lanes yeah. and stuff like this. So we're we, and we're we're right up to the border of that acre and a half. So that's what I'm referring to when I yeah. when I think about now the shelter workshop. I don't know if you've watched it, but we do have semis that will come in back over there in the back uh, in that back area uh, behind the um, third third street area. So uh, there has to be ways of designing. Uh, the, the workflow for your for our traffic, and that's going to include for the workshop piece uh, semi uh, uh, traffic, and then of course we've got our vans that pick up uh, consumers, and then you're going to have our regular automobiles that uh, either parents, right. uh, consumers, uh, staff. Uh, have. And this is the way that I would answer that same question. We always try to see if it's for free, we definitely will take free. You know, we are publicly funded. Right. We are providing a, a service to the community uh, and, and such. Free not being available, we look at partnerships. What is it that we can do as a partnership in bringing funds from both 
that's not available, then we look at being able to fund it on our own. I mean, one of our strategies is as we get closer to this thing, we haven't even discussed this, is talking with the county. What are the assets on the sale of that building, uh, the, if we can sell the workshop building, there should be proceeds from those uh, mm -hmm. from those buildings, and that will be some resource to us. I, I I don't know what marketability haven't really even begun, you know that part of our homework yet. Right. Um, one last question, and that is, um, given the Veterans Park um, footprint and and their um, their external uh, materials. And the, you know the, I mean it's a it's a nice looking building. Okay. What do you all see for you as a neighbor to that? I, mean, I would I would like I would like we would get into discussions with who I and I have not done this at this point. I think it's premature. But uh, if the veterans has used a certain architect for the design and and the uh, structure the materials, the appearance, the colors, and so forth. I would like that, at least my opinion is, and this is, we've not discussed any of this at this point in time with our board, but blend that, make that compatible, certainly with that beautiful building. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. I, I ran some numbers, and, and it just so happens a 30,000 square foot building, and then I study the parking places at 450 square feet and all. It comes out one and a half acres, so it not make it tight, like you're talking about. Uh, so why would you need five acres if two acres is more than adequate? Because some of the design that we're looking at is, as we talk about wellness and the uh, uh, partnering with primary care, is to also build that in that same uh, uh, arena for... Um, in the future? Yeah. So you're talking 30,000 square feet immediately with additional to come on later is your 30,000 feet you're talking well, I mean, about the total now I, I think what she's talking about is a landscaping uh, uh, border uh, uh, around the facility that can be conducive to some of our individuals like being in a park and, and so forth and enjoying that uh, outside uh, element uh, is that is that where you were going with that Emma? Yeah. Um, so I'm not I'm not real up to speed though with you on, on your on your calculations and how you've done this. Uh, you're, you're saying that you got a thirty thousand square foot building in an acre and a half. You told that you, know, you had a you're going to need twenty to thirty thousand square foot building. What you right, said, right? And if you take seventy parking places at a fifteen by thirty at four hundred fifty square feet, and that totals up to thirty one thousand five hundred. So that totals sixty one five by by forty three five sixty. That's one point four acres without your fire area. So one and a half acres, as you said, would be border to border. You wouldn't have it yet. With, with, with a 20,000 square foot building? No, yes. a 30,000 square foot building. I used a 30,000 square foot building. So I can see where you could need up to two, which would give you another half acre for parkland. But but I, I think I'm going to I'm gonna want to see uh, maybe a, get the preliminary thought proposal mm -hmm. So we need to utilize this land to the fullest extent. We need to give you what is adequate, maybe not give, it's not there. Provide that, that might be an option. But if it, you don't need four or five acres, two acres will be accommodated. We don't need you to bank the excess land, mm -hmm. I think. So I guess we're going to, I'm hearing, I'm going to want to see something of what you really need instead of taking all this excess land. And we can come back with better detail around that. My impression that for today's meeting was just to get uh, a meet and greet, to get an awareness of who we are, that there, may, there was a little bit of confusion as to who we are in comparison to another entity and just wanted to clarify that. So we, I'm so, I apologize. We did not come prepared with any, with any I'm specifics for the next on one. the size. And yeah. I'm just saying for the next one, I think we need to. It would be good to have a bird's eye site plan, uh -huh. you know, um, what I'm talking about is you would have the, the park footprint, you know, footprint of you know what's drawn out, maybe a little walking trail or and, whatever. You and that'll work when you get the survey. I mean, you right. know, 
Once and, you uh, get that, do, you could do, do you agree, though, that we could proceed and at least get the survey? Uh, I mean, we can share in that cost. Uh, if that's, yeah. You know, well, I understand that you, you and Ram have already worked yeah, out. Y'all yeah. already agreed and flipped right. the cost yeah. on the survey, right. so that's going to come up. Exactly. So, I, I'd so like, that's already happened. I'd okay. like to see the, the, uh, actual, the actual lay of the land and what, what, what is really there. Right. Yeah. And then go from there. Yeah. But I understand your your point is that uh, you want to you're stewards of the pro, of the total complex sure. area yeah. and, and, right. and you want to manage that within your charter, I suppose. Yeah. So the rest of the land that you other facilities you have are gonna all be vacated. So what yeah. you're using downtown could be sold and it could be converted downtown, that could go back into business or retail right. or whatever that's correct. because we you're going to be moving that out we have different that's arrangements right. at every location at the shopping center it is a lease uh, agreement with a uh, private owner it's a landlord that we pay a, a lease to in the workshop that property belongs to us that local advisory board purchased it paid off the note and then the board disbanded and they deeded the property to us for use for these programs because they wanted to assure a perpetuity of the availability of this service in this community and we have it all uh, uh, spelled out in the deed the location where our administrative office is that is county owned they purchased that when they made that available to renee um, Pena, Pena, who's next door to us that was the old county county, county, county right. so uh that would go back to the county to be able to lease out or, or do what they would need with that. The only one that we could clearly sell is the work center piece, which is our property, and then we would need to negotiate with the county on the mental health building because that board deeded that to the county, and that's how the county meets their match requirement because every county uh, provides us with a match uh, uh, for the general revenue dollar. Some of them do it through in-kind, some of them do it through cash donation. The value of that building, the value of the work, of the um, the administrative office all gets calculated and then it's identified as what, that's what the county is providing as in-kind. Okay. So we have different arrangements. Okay. Now we don't have anything on the agenda to make a, to make any consideration or not. But you're going to be receiving a copy of the survey. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, okay. it would probably behoove you to maybe sit down and do just like they said and come back in November, December with something a little bit more definitive proposal on what you think the acreage you're going to need so we can actually have more to make a decision on it. Okay. Well, that's a good recommendation. You know, very good. It's just one step sure. till the next one and so forth. We meet on the uh, second uh, Monday of each month, and that's the 11th. And I think uh, the survey may be ready this week. Should be. Great. Any other questions of them, gentlemen? No. I do thank you. I think y'all did great. Thank you. And what you need now that we get that to generate some questions from us. Very okay, good. Wonderful. wonderful. Thank wonderful. you so much. Again, if y'all are by our programs, feel free to come by, learn what it is that we're doing. We're very proud of the services that we provide. We've always had a Good relationship with, with um, Wilson County. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much. I'll call you. Very nice meeting you. Erwin, I'll call you when. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right. All right. Thank y'all for setting that up. That was important. Okay. My office is on high. If not, we're ready to go into a discussion and consideration of a real estate with F and W electrical contractor and also uh, following the chapter 551 we can enter into executive discussion uh, for real estate discussions and negotiations which would be both the F and W and Laredo Laredo Hydro Tech here. <coughs> so if, if y'all are ready to do that we need to go into executive discussion out to the motion. I'll make a motion to go to executive session to discuss F and W electric contractors and the rate of hydro tech. A motion to go into executive session. Second. And second in discussion of F and W and the rate of hydro tech. Any other discussion? 
All in favor, if you're going to executive session, say aye. Aye. All opposed, same time. We're going to go into executive session. I have now, it is 7.53. We'll allow the of our visitors to excuse themselves. Are you, uh, Henry, are you going to be in your office when we call us from your yes, group? All right. If you are you going to be hanging around? Yes. Uh, outside or where we know?